This week in PlayStation, we're talking about Tim Getty's Spider-Man 2 impressions. We'll have all this and more because this is PS I Love You XOXO. <laughs> Yo, what's up? I'm Blessing. That's Tim. That's Andy. And this is PS I Love You XOXO, your weekly PlayStation podcast that you can watch live on patreon.com slash kind of funny, except not today because we're doing a cool embargo thing today or later on podcast services around the globe. Remember, you can use Epic Creator Code kind of funny on all Epic Store and Epic in-game purchases like Rocket League and Fortnite to help support the channel. To be a part of the show, head to kind of funny.com slash P-S-I-L-Y to write in with your questions, PSN messages, and more. And remember, patreon.com slash kind of funny will get you the show ad free plus a bevy of bonus content. Thank you to our Patreon producers, Brave Athos, Jedi Master Deadpool, and Delaney Twining. Today we're brought to you by Rocket Money and DraftKings Sportsbook. But let's start with topic of the show. Hi, Andy. Hi, Tim. Hi. Hey. How's it going? Really good. Pretty good. Pretty. It's pretty good because I can see Tim's face again. He's back. He's back. I've been gone. In Los Angeles, California, playing very Spider-Man cool 2, Marvel Spider-Man 2, on the PlayStation 5. And you can finally talk about it. And it feels good. Oh. I can't wait to tell you guys about this game. So <laughs> that's full. <laughs> it's terrible. <laughs> you guys aren't ready for Waste this. the money of a trip. <laughs> so that's why we're, we're, we're skipping the, the preamble. We're, skip, we're skipping the, the warm-up. We're getting right into the topic of the show. Uh, to let people know, we're, ta- we're not talking about the state of play this episode. State of play happened yesterday. We did a live reactions yesterday. We're doing a KFGD today to talk about the state of play. Uh, but because we're in the past, we haven't seen the state of play, so we can't talk about the state of play. We're just going to talk about Spider-Man 2. Good. Tim, you went to LA. Mm-hmm. You saw it. How much Spider-Man 2 did you get to play? I got to play about two to three hours of Spider-Man 2. It was, it was a lengthy demo, and it was a very good demo. I would go as far as saying one of the best demos I've ever played. Oh, um, I feel like in terms of what they showed, I was sufficiently impressed with it. Um, and I was impressed with the variety of it, of how many of the different types of uh, gameplay elements we're going to see in this game. Um, as both Miles and Peter, how they are very similar, but also very different in terms of uh, their, their combat and even traversal. Um, but overall, I had a fantastic time with this game. I do think it is this, the thing we just got to get out of the way. It's more Spider-Man. That's what mm-hmm. this is. And I think that that's going to make a lot of people extremely happy. I don't know what else they would expect going into this, wanting something else. Um, but if you didn't like the other Spider-Man games, I don't think that this one's going to win you over. Um, and also, who are you? Yeah, that, like, if, you did, if you didn't like the Spider-Man game. Exactly. Game. There are people out yeah, there. Reveal yourself. Um, but I, I honestly feel like the, the best thing I can say uh, about Spider-Man, Marvel Spider-Man 2 from what I've played of it is it reminds me a lot of the jump from Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 2 to 3 or a Super Mario Brothers 3 to Super Mario World where mm. it is the same type of gameplay. It is a very, very similar game. It's just ratcheted up. It's just prettier. It's just kind of refined. Like this game is the Spider-Man gameplay refined way further than we've ever seen it before and i feel like that's in terms of the momentum of traversal in terms of the variety of the side quests that you're doing in the open world in terms of the characters and stories that they're they're building out there it just feels ratcheted refined in in a way that like we kind of would expect from an insomniac but me mentioning tony hawk and and mario there those are two examples of games that had that next gen leap right from ps1 to ps2 or from nes to snes um uh, even a legend of zelda to a link to the past type um vibe there Mm -hmm. i i feel like we're getting this here and it feels like a ps5 game so i think for me that brings me to my biggest question of we've already had sort of a semi-sequel to spider-man 2018 with miles morales right and even that you know, I think in our conversations around that, the idea of, oh, yeah, this is kind of a spinoff. This is kind of a different thing. This is almost like a half iteration title because it's shorter and all these things. But even with that game, there are things that you could point to to be like, oh, yeah, this is the next step, though, right? Like, they're giving Miles this different sort of moveset. They're refining a lot of the stuff here. There's also the fact that this is a PS5 game. So you have the performance mode and the, eventually the performance um, ray tracing and all that cool stuff. Does this feel like an even bigger jump from uh, Spider-Man 2018 to Miles Morales? Does this feel like 
something that deserves to have that two on there? I was surprised that the answer is yes. Like, I, I feel like uh, in, in the ways that it uses the dual sense, I was super impressed. Like, there's, uh, I mean, the dual sense was awesome even in, in Spider Man Remastered and in uh, Miles Morales, but there's uh, one little bit where you, you go into this, like, uh, reactor and you have to, like, get some little thing back in place so that, like, the reactor doesn't explode or whatever the hell is going to happen. And as you're going through, you get to this uh, little thing where there's like different like magnets that you need to to adjust. Yeah. Oh, this is perfect. B-roll right here, Barrett. Thank you. Right. This is exactly what I was about to talk about. There's these little bars with the L2 and R2 that you need to kind of get the the icons in the right place on these uh, rectangles. And when you first look at it, you're kind of like, oh, okay, cool. And you just like hit both of the the triggers. But then you realize it's pushing back on you because it's the magnet. Mm -hmm. You can feel it. And you need to hold the um, triggers in the, the right place to be able to to hit it and the feedback it gives it it's that perfect next gen controller uh experience that you you want to see and that we don't see too often in, in a lot of the games that come out but that when, was a shiny dumper there by the oh, way oh yeah yeah the venom dump is yeah is, <laughs> there's go. a lot of looking like a ham yeah. on thanksgiving morning yes. man <laughs> <laughs> um but i was really impressed with just how solid and premium it the experience felt with the the haptics and the vibration of the the dual sense um to the point that i don't know I don't remember Miles Morales blowing me away with that stuff and the way that like a Returnal, like the sounds of all mm. that did, um, or, or Astrobot dished in pretty much every way. But I would say that this was more similar to an Astrobot experience for me where the DualSense stood out as a plus playing Spider-Man 2. Um, and I feel like that is kind of what you were talking about of like, does this feel like a 2? Again, it is just more Spider-Man. But like, to me, that's the best thing ever. Uh, and I feel like the next gen stuff is kind of just how fast it all is like the fast travel i mean remember in the first game there was the subway system fast travel in this it's just fast baby like i feel like so much of the refinements here and what makes it feel like a sequel is just the stuff that worked before but we're always like we could see where the improvements could be the improvements are there now like when you fast travel it is essentially instant and you can just choose where you want to on the the map and it just goes the camera kind of zooms out zooms in um very gta 5 but just lightning fast and it feels very satisfying to to see the move actually happen um and it's cool that the game seems to want to get away from the concept of like towers and the more old school open world approach that um the the, the other games had that are very the, the ubisoft form yeah like right? standard like all right let's slowly open up this map and like you fo that's the first thing you focus on is like all right let me make sure i got all this stuff unlocked and then start clearing things out from there open world 101 so yeah exactly the foundations. It's, it's really kind of taking a lot of uh what we expect and just repackaging it in a way that feels fresh so it's focusing on like filling out the districts and getting um percentages of those districts done to be able to add more points of interest and, and and do more which sounds very similar to how they did it before it's just the way it's presented feels more seamless like the open world feels a bit more, and specifically when you're talking about the menus and the maps of it all, it's presented in a way that doesn't feel as checklisty. Um, it feels a little bit more like just a natural experience and seamless between the gameplay and going out and looking like what you need to do. And one of my favorite things about the Spider Insomniac Spider-Man games is there's a, a narrative that's really good with characters that I am actually invested in. And when the the little lore radio shows pop up. I want to hear what they have to say. And it, it feels like there's there's an impact to it and that the world is living and every time you turn it on, the crime's happening. And even though it's kind of pre-programmed, it feels like it's this bespoke thing that's happening. And like, it's a Spider-Man simulator in a lot of ways, right? And I feel like um, Spider-Man 2 has really surprised me in, in a lot of ways that if you remove yourself from playing this, You'd be like, oh yeah, that was how Spider Man One was. But then you go back to Spider Man One, and I was in, which I did uh, last night, and I was like, oh my god, like so much of this feels archaic. So it's it's a weird thing where I think that people are gonna play Spider Man Two and be like, oh, it's just more of the same. But really, it's extremely different. One of the biggest ways for me is in the uh, first game, there's the backpacks that are hidden all over the place, right? Or there's the um, all the different collectibles. How does, how does this kid afford so many backpacks is my question. That's a great question. You know, Allowance. There's still those type of things in the game, but instead of it being a pull up a menu and kind of see the checklist of where they all are, you're kind of drawn to them a bit more naturally in the world. And some of it is uh, instead of like looking at a menu and then going in, you're just swinging through the city and like there's a big glowing 
orb in the sky and you're like okay well clearly that's something but like it it video gamifies it a little more than spider-man one did but in a way that i feel like keeps the action of you moving through the city instead of having to pull up a map and like break the the fun of the momentum of a spider-man game and um just like the, like the exactly this little uh orb that he's in here mm. uh. you can see there's these um little spider bots that are all over uh the place that you can kind of collect um that get you the tech parts that let you do the upgrades and all of that stuff but um similar to the other games but maybe even more so i'm on my way to the next story beat and i want to know what happens and i care so much about these characters but i'm seeing four different things that draw my attention and i'm like yeah. well i gotta get that before i move on and i feel like that's kind of the the fun of the loop of spider-man and um having platinums both the other games and like playing a lot of these the, of spider-man playing this i was like i cannot wait oh, do yeah. every single thing possible in this game now, andy you requested specifically to be on this episode mm -hmm. of ps love you xoxo what's your biggest question for tim coming out of this preview um i think one of my bigger issues with the original spider men video games had to do with how alive the city felt and how uh much of it just felt like set dressing with a lot of faked aliveness uh along with side missions right like it all that stuff started to get a little bit monotonous i wanted to know like when you are on the ground floor what are the differences in this game when you are walking around is it just the same old NPCs going, hey, Spider-Man, taking a photo with Do you? Do a backflip. Are, are you able to, are there any buildings that you can actually walk into where it doesn't do that weird fixed camera thing and you kind of walk in in like this weird sort of orthographic view? Is the ground life a lot more realistic feeling? So um, I will say yes. I don't know by how demonstrable of a degree, but I will say that Spider-Man 2018 compared to Miles Morales, I feel like Miles Morales tripled down on the character of Harlem, right? Uh, of being in there and, and seeing like how the Christmas affected uh, the city and uh, being able to see like the actual local storefronts. And it, it just kind of felt more alive, mm -hmm. uh, if not even in the people, but just more in the set dressing of it, not just feeling like a bunch of buildings next to each other, but actually feeling like the district itself had an identity. I noticed a lot more of that in this game, kind of just applied to all of Manhattan, uh, but then even more so the moment that you get to go across the bridge yeah. over to Queens was special. Mm. Like it was, it felt like, you know, I've been playing these games for five years now. And when you get near the bridge, you get near the water, it gets kind of awkward and you like can't go any further, but like you see the bridge. And I remember playing like Grand Theft Auto 3 for the first time. Verizontal bridge. You get that moment <laughs> where you get to like go across the bridge and it's like, there's more of this game. The map is double the size in Spider-Man 2. Let's go. And yeah, my, my, I guess one of my questions also was, was any of it closed off from you in the demo? Um, no, no, it was, it was pretty open. And we, they, they set us off, um, I don't know how far into the game, but it felt deep enough that it was um, definitely not the beginning. Um, Peter had the, the suit to start, the, the symbiote suit. Um, and I played probably equally as Peter and Miles, maybe a little bit more Peter uh, of it all. But what's really cool about um, this game compared to the other ones is you do play as both. Um, and there's a lot of kind of prescribed story missions where you have to play as one or the other, and there's like cutscenes that kind of tee it all up. But then when you're in the open world, you can switch back and forth between them, hmm. and they're both in different areas. Is um, it GTA Five style where you switch and then like Miles yeah. is in the middle of doing something? Mm -hmm. He's like pushing somebody over a bridge. We, we, I, I didn't <laughs> he's, get. He's I didn't in a dress. That. He's riding on a motorcycle oh, down shit, the highway. Don't, <laughs> don't I, say shit, right? <laughs> I imagine there will be things like that. It uh. feels like they're setting it up for that. I didn't get to see that uh, in particular. Uh, in fact, I was a little bit surprised that the the demo didn't show off that stuff more explicitly. Um, there's a a trailer that uh, we got to see that I, I think is now out for everybody to see that does get into a bit more of the systems and how this all works and you get to see the fast travel and the switching. We didn't actually do that in the the demo and I I, I don't know why because I feel like that would have been a really cool talking point. Um, but I think they just wanted to focus on the kind of prestigeness of the whole thing where it, there, a lot of what I'd play I'd say was like. 70% like the core main mission stuff mm, okay. and 30% more open world where I get to do whatever I want. I did a couple side quests. Uh, I don't want to spoil anything, but there was a, a couple that literally like made my jaw drop. Like oh, I, yeah. there, I saw something that like, I was like, this is 
freaking awesome and i can't wait for everyone to see it a uh, couple things actually i love that like make these worth it make yeah. make me yeah. want to do the side quests and not have them be just trophy hunts you know and i do think it's maintains being one of the funnest trophy hunting games there's a lot to do um from what i experienced it seems like there's a bit more variety in terms of the crimes breaking out um but it is still spider-man right it is still like a lot of the same type of like i i was Finding a guy, got on the van, had to mm. go and hit him on the windows and stuff. It felt fresh. It felt like new animations. A ton of new animations in this awesome. game. I, I feel like that's something that, like, even, like, just the, the poses that they make. Oh, um, how was the wingsuit? Dude, I'll get to that in, in, yeah. in just uh, a second. Cause, uh, was that, like, the Captain Falcon? Not Captain Falcon. Was that the, the Falcon? The Falcon's <laughs> wingsuit? That looked <laughs> so, very similar. God, there's so much to say about this game, man. Uh, but just sticking on the switching between Peter and Miles thing, um, there are different side quests and things that are only available to one or the other, uh, depending on what their stories are. Like all the locations and characters, like obviously us playing the other games, it's like 2018 was so tied to Peter and Aunt May and that cast of characters. And then the Miles game really got intimate with like building out his community and and um, uh, all of his friends and Genki and uh, his mom and, and um, those characters feeling so, I feel like great. And playing this, going back and forth between Peter and Miles and their side characters felt like watching Infinity War and having Thor and um, the Guardians kind of meet up where it's like, yeah, this, we, we knew this was going to happen eventually and it just feels right that it is. But to see it, it's like, this, it feels upped. And that's why I think it's cool that the Spider-Man 2 of it all, the Miles cast of characters is so integrated into Peter's life. Hell yeah. That it, it, Love that. The, there's always God, damn, interesting good. things going on where it's popping back and forth between Miles getting this story stuff. And again, I just what I loved so much about 2018 story wise was how much it focused on the Peter Parker of it all. Right. Mm -hmm. It's a Spider-Man game, but like they cared about Peter. This Miles clearly cared about Miles and his family. And as much of the story is them out of the suit as in the suit. And I feel like the way they um, continue to kind of um, just knock that stuff out of the park it's fun now getting this added dynamic that we've had from Miles Morales being a smaller game that now getting the bigger treatment and something that I didn't expect is conversations between Miles and Harry and what huh. their dynamic sounds like or can be. And it got me really excited to think about how everything is going to either connect or not connect um, because it playing the game felt like we said this uh, when we were playing Final Fantasy 16 at the preview uh, a couple months ago, like, it kind of feels like playing through seasons of a TV show. Mm -hmm. This feels like playing through a season of a really good Spider-Man uh, show where it's like there's an A plot, B plot. They do connect sometimes and they have very individual vibes to them that I think fit the tone of what we've seen so far from the Insomniac with these characters in these games. But it also feels like a natural progression forward of what Peter and Miles dynamic is um, and especially how it's being affected by the whole Venom yeah. of it all. So in getting to check out the different boroughs, how was swinging through them, right? Like I always think back to Spider-Man Homecoming where there's that scene where he's like running through the neighborhoods and there's no tall buildings. And so like there's nothing for his web to stick to. Was there any of that? Like I know that's been a big question for a lot of people. Yeah. So uh, the, the bit of Queens that we got to, to play, it feels very different than anything that we've had in this game. There is not tall buildings around. Like mm. there, there was such identity and personality to that area. And it did feel a bit more on the ground, melee focused, and it changed up even your combat. Um, mm. And then that's where there was a lot of walking inside building stuff, like walking inside okay. houses and things. And it is still the like camera stuff where it's, it feels a bit more like a Last of Us, uh, like the opening of Last of Us, or like the opening of Guardians of the Galaxy, the game where it's like, you're kind of just like walking around investigating different yeah. pictures. More guided. But you're in third person. Yeah. Like over the shoulder, you're turning mm -hmm. the camera. Because mm -hmm. the weird camera thing I'm mentioning is like, you're like when you're like doing a side mission and like you like the fight goes into a cafe and now it's like a 2D it's fight just like in the a cafe. Fixed, yeah, it's like <laughs> oh a, yeah, no, no, no. Camera. It's oh, not okay. that. It's not that. It's just more like you know, close up camera behind the your your back and like you're slowly moving. You can't run around. It is, Even that's a big improvement. Yeah, like I that's mean, yeah. stuff Honestly, that I was hoping for. Miles had a lot of it, right? Uh, Miles and Morales, uh, the like the labs that you would go into, um, like the more inside, yeah. the smaller scale inside stuff. 
Um, there was more of that than uh, than I expected. Um, but luckily, you know, the crane dude from the Andrew Garfield Spider Man, he brought all his. He was like, let's get all the cranes over there in the burrows. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So the cranes aren't in the burrows, but the cranes are uh, in the water. And the big set piece thing that we saw, uh, the drone fight uh, in the first Spider Man Two, or not first, but like the big Spider Man Two trailer the we got showcase. from the showcase. We got to play through that entire sequence, and it was exciting as hell. Like it is the Uncharted for the being dragged behind the the Jeep type thing, where your adrenaline's pumping, the way music's you're switching, going. music's going, you're switching between Miles and Peter at the oh, perfect sick. times. So damn cool. Um, it was it was thrilling, and it was just the beginning. That is like mm-hmm. phase one of a multi-phase set piece. The set piece is. They're doing the damn thing. Let's go. Man. Yeah, the, what we, we have right here is uh, close to where the uh, um, demo actually ended for me. But it's, it's a big boss fight against big old lizard. Oh, and by the way, is this your gameplay or is this no, provided? this is provided by PlayStation here. Gotcha. So oh, you, Preview uh, provided by PlayStation. Yeah, preview yeah. provided. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Um, I wanted to ask about, uh, you know, a lot of these, when we go to these press events, they'll sometimes say, we're dropping you in here and you're already leveled up and you have a whole lot of abilities. Was that the experience here where they kind of gave you a big tool set? Yeah. Again, guys, I could, there's so much to talk about with this game, and like it's so exciting. Real quick, th- I want to get back to that, but blessed to mm-hmm. answer your question about the uh, the mobility of, of the things, the yeah. wingsuit. It's a complete game changer. Let's it, go. It changed like the, what you're talking about that feeling of swinging and ha- the music swelling up and like how good it feels to just move around in this game. All of that's still there, but adding the wingsuit just adds. I mean, it's literally like adding the cape in Mario World, where you can get the balance down of what you're doing, and it just feels good to have this one extra way to keep going and keep the momentum you have. What's so cool about it is, again, this goes back to the video gameness of this, where I feel like they made some decisions that were like, hey, we're, we're going for real, but like, what if we just didn't and just made it more fun? Yeah. And it feels like they con- cautiously, consciously made that decision multiple times. There's wind tunnels everywhere. <laughs> you just see these like circles of wind. And if you go there, it's essentially fast travel. It just nice. rockets you and you have to kind of adjust to get in, but then you can kind of just like let go and it just, Zoom. it just zooms you. And the first time you, you go across the bridge, there's like a wind tunnel under the bridge oh. and you kind of like wing down into it. And then once you get into the wind tunnel, you just start going at it. It was awesome. Like, it, it sounds like just, what I want out of a Superman game. It was <laughs> so, so, so cool. Now, oh, yeah. having said that, um, it, similar to Spider-Man 1, when you first play it, you get the control in your hands. It is a little overwhelming. There's a lot of buttons to be pressing. Uh, it's a lot to remember of like, oh, how do you do the zip line to a point? Like, how do you do all this stuff? Mm-hmm. After like 20 minutes, it's second nature. And yeah. you're back and you're like, I know exactly what I'm doing here. The wingsuit feels weird. Like, it does not feel how you'd expect it to where it's very nimble and it is very like you're controlling like a, a Star Fox, like a, mm. a, a plane type game, but like it's a little body and like every little tweak you do, it's very like mm-hmm. jerky. But then the moment you understand it, it adds so much more mobility where the swings are like these big arcing movements. The wingsuit is nimble as hell. And it's like you use them in conjunction with each other to like swing, do a fast turn down an alley and you can wingsuit down and get oh, caught yeah. into one of the drafts and it'll shoot you up. Like it's just freaking cool as hell man (laughs) that's awesome so andy was asking about the upgrade stuff and i want to actually layer another question on top of that because of course i asked people to write into kind of funny.com slash psily with all their questions but before we even get there i'll let you know about patreon.com slash kind of funny games over on patreon.com slash kind of funny you can go and get the show ad free and speaking of ads let us tell you about our sponsors This episode is brought to you by Rocket Money. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions. It monitors your spending and it helps lower your bills all in one place. And it has surprised multiple people uh, at Kind of Funny, multiple of my friends at how many subscriptions they have that they forgot about and are still paying for. It's so easy to cancel the ones you don't want with just the press of a button. Rocket Money, it does all the work for you. Rocket Money can even negotiate to lower your bills for you by up to 20%. All you have to do is take a picture of your bill and Rocket Money will take care of the rest. Rocket Money is a personal finance app that finds and cancels your unwanted subscriptions. It monitors your spending and helps lower your bills all in one place. Stop wasting money on things that you don't use, cancel your unwanted subscriptions and manage your money the easy way by going to rocketmoney.com slash kind of funny. That's rocketmoney.com slash kind of funny. 
This episode is brought to you by DraftKings Sportsbook. Football is back in full swing with another week of epic games. And who's got you covered on the action for every single one of them? DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner of the NFL. Nobody's missing out on the action this season. All DraftKings customers can take advantage of two new offers every game day this September. You can get in on the NFL Week 2 action with DraftKings Sportsbook. Download the app now and use code KINDAFUNNY to sign up. New customers can bet just $5 and take home 200 instantly in bonus bets only on DraftKings Sportsbook with code KINDAFUNNY. The crown is yours. If you have a gambling problem, call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit www.1800gambler.net. In New York, call 1-877-8-HOPENY or text HOPENY 467-369. In Connecticut, help is available for problem gambling. You can call 888-789-7777 or visit ccpg.org. Please play responsibly on behalf of Boot Hill Casino and Resort KS. 21 plus age varies by jurisdiction. Void in Ontario. See dkng.co slash football for eligibility. Bonus bets expire seven days after issuance. Eligibility and deposit restrictions apply. Nitro writes in to kindoffunny.com slash P-S-I-L-Y, just like you can, and says, our suit power is back. They weren't in Miles Morales. Did they ditch them for something else? Oh, that's a good question um, that I don't know the answer to. But I can say that the skill trees are very changed up from how they were before. There's a lot of them, a lot of different tech things to collect to be able to upgrade. Um, a lot of this was stuff them just dropping us in. We were pretty powered up. They gave it, there was a lot of ability points. It being open world, I was able to do a ton of the side quests to like get more to like uh, deck my boys out. Uh, Miles has his own skill tree. Peter has his own skill tree. And then they have a skill tree together as a duo. Mm -hmm. um, didn't get to upgrade that one too much. So I don't, I don't know what that's going to do. Um, but when they are together, there are like specific tag team moves. They're With Kratos sick Atreus as hell. type stuff. Yeah, kind okay. of. But even more than that, it feels more like a, a limit break in Final Fantasy type okay. thing where it's a big, big animation happening mm -hmm. and like they team up and like make jokes together and like it's the hi fi rush combos. Yeah, exactly. That type of thing. Mm -hmm. So pretty cool. When you um, said there's a lot of skill trees, are we talking a lot of categories to like this one is only for the spider bots and this one yes. is only for. Rocket it, launchers, snipers. <laughs> similar to the last the last couple Spider-Man games, like there's a lot of different kind of things you can upgrade and mm -hmm. abilities you can upgrade and then suits you can upgrade and then this you can upgrade okay, and like gotcha. pads you can go down. Like there's just a lot of Th it. Does it feel like you're going to complete it or does it feel like it wants you to choose a lane? Uh, it feels like you're going to complete it okay. over time. I mean, I think through one playthrough, you, you might probably do you most choose of a little it. bit. Yeah, yeah but, but I think that you are able to do it all over time. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was really i think expanded compared to the last couple games um and the costumes yeah my god there are so many of them and each one of them has multiple colorways oh that's awesome so it's like let's go literally oh, oh here's the 2099 suit and then it's like four different colors that's the uh, number one teams. takeaway let's dude go. honestly it was it was awesome man like i ended up playing miles um the, the 10th anniversary uh, Miles suit is in this, and it looks so damn sick. It's the one that's a little more like a hoodie mm. slash cape thing right. going on. Um, I just played as the normal Miles, though, but in a black and blue color scheme. Oh. It was like kind of funny blue instead of the red Ooh. on just the normal Miles look, and it was fucking hot. That's um, awesome. Playing as Peter the entire time, it was uh, the, the, the black suit um, Spider-Man that I was playing as, and I ended up being able to use the Raimi Spider-Man 3 uh, look with the embedded webs and stuff and it, oh, yeah. it just felt right like, do they have any other mentions about additional colorways similar to the way like destiny does shaders you get a shader and here's like no it, it was just like four color schemes per okay per suit but like Still awesome they were good like okay. it, awesome. it, there was like thought put into it it didn't look like it was just kind of like hey here's yeah. like a palette and here we go it's like no like they were designed um I was very, very impressed with it. Um, and it, there's just so much. And like the fact that you have Peter and Miles and like you get to choose their their suits, you get to choose the color of their suits, then you get to upgrade them differently. And then of course that goes to the combat gameplay of each one of them. Um, the combat system is the same as it was before, but I feel like it's um, just kind of like, it's cleaner. Going back to my uh, wow. Tony Hawk uh, two to three, Mario three to Mario world type thing. Like you see here, like the, um, the bottom left of the screen has the like, it looks like face buttons mm -hmm. um our camera right now is blocking it but it's matched on the right side as well and yeah thank you so much barrett this is pretty much the ui for both of the characters and it's very similar to the first two games where you know you hit l1 and it brings up like the wheel of which um 
uh, ability you want to use or whatever. Yeah. This just keeps makes it a lot more like quick in the moment where you're essentially holding L2 or R2 to, and then the face buttons to do these different uh, abilities. Um, and uh, with, with Miles, they are uh, a lot based on the electricity and the shock stuff that he had in, in Miles Morales. And with Peter so far, it's all the Venom stuff. It's all the, the just the, the insane aggressive attacks you got going on. I got, I got a question in from Toasty06 who says, can you switch off the symbiote like in Web of Shadows? No, I mean, not. So what we played was a bit more of the like story beat stuff. So you like, you couldn't gotcha. uh, mess around with that. But I mean, it does seem like there's a lot that they weren't showing us in terms of like what the suit's going to do and how it's going to function. Um, but got, yeah, it was, it was cool. An another question on top of what you're talking about with the HUD stuff specifically, Cameron Kennedy writes in and says, Hey y'all, how intrusive do the special ability HUD elements at the bottom of the screen, like we saw in the May demo, feel during combat? Do they still remain on screen throughout combat like they did back then? How unique do Miles and Peter feel from one another in regards to traversal? And is there anything that's not necessarily new but refined here that stands out? Thanks. That's one thing that I noticed as we were watching that gameplay is that, like, you mentioned that, oh, yeah, you look at the bottom, you have both those uh, sort of, like, weapon, or not weapon, like, um, abilities for the Spider-Man. It seems a bit like, oh, that's a lot to have on the screen. It's, it's not once you stop looking at it and you can kind of just read it as like just something in your periphery like it's essentially like the uh active time battle system mm -hmm. in, in a final fantasy or um like like cooldowns in like a, a a kingdom rush game or something like that right where it's uh like you just want to see like how close you are to being able to like kind of chain combos together of like unleashing your that feels like final fantasy 16 it, it really is oh yeah. I, honestly yeah final fantasy 16 is the best way to put it like yeah. it's it's that thing where it's like you stop actually looking at it at a certain point you just kind of feel it out and you can see when it like finishes and you're like all right cool now that one now that one now that one in between the classic spider-man gameplay of like you know punching them up in the sky swinging to hit them off like um it, I feel like not only was it not intrusive, I feel like it is just a refined version of what we already had. Um, and it didn't ever get in my way. Having said that, there's a lot going on in this game. Like it's it's Spider-Man. So it's like you're constantly like finagling with these buttons and you're fighting the controller at times. Um, uh, and especially in points of desperation where like you're on wave seven of enemies and you're just like, how many more are there? Like trying to manage your health and like the healing and the focus and all that stuff. So there is a lot. Is there... Or were there any hints of the sneaking missions with like oh, were there any moments that you're like oh they're bringing this back hopefully it's improved in some way yes so uh a bigger section actually that i got to play um focused on and i think this is actually a good example of like the difference between the peter story and the miles story that's going on uh miles they're really setting in on this like he is they are both Spider-Man. Like they, they make that very clear. Whenever they talk, it says Spider-Man. They just have a different emoji next to it, and it's getting into the the conflict Miles is having of like the city needs Spider-Man. Him, but the city also needs Miles, and his his community needs Miles, and like what that means for him, and how that's different than the tried and true story we've seen of that same thing for Peter. And part of it is there's this museum that uh, his mom's friend is trying to like get this like cool like. Um, youth program going but they're not going to get funding because of x y and z reason whatever it is Capitalism and so like late miles Capitalism. has to get involved and like help out <laughs> with that with that and um the while that's happening like the museum's getting a bunch of things stolen and so it's like then spider-man has to go save the day and that kind of turned into a stealth mission um like we would see in the previous games but instead of it being the sneaking around as miles or whatever it's a spider bot thing so you're going through this felt extremely like we've had spider bot uh, stuff in the other games but this felt extremely like cl clank stuff and yeah no this clank. looks yeah, like, right, or like stuff. this is very insomnia or not even clank stuff they're, they're, you know what i'm the talking other... about the, those things there was yeah, a lot was, of that but yeah but what was cool about it is um how kind of fun and interactive this felt and it, it like it felt like a prestige version of these things. Like it felt like the production value was a little higher and like the, the acting and the characters that are like walking around that you're trying to distract uh, felt more fun and developed than just kind of like generic thugs that you're uh, trying to get around. They took down Philip or something. Yeah, <laughs> it, it was like, it was better than that. Like, mm -hmm. and it, just, just a little bit, like definitely my least favorite part of the demo was this stuff. And I think a lot of it had to do with um, the speed of the camera didn't quite feel right. So it's like, it was very jerky and like you had to go through and, you know, detective mode, see 
the pipes of get the power from this thing to that thing and it's very like all right we've done this a million times before it's never really that fun um and doing all of that we'd get to the end of it and like people would see me or not see me and so like that changed how like uh stressed i was or like oh just just open it and the finicky button presses of like you have to hit triangle when it's lined up perfectly it can just be a little frustrating as this, as this spider bot where it just kind of like felt like not it didn't feel good now in rift you know? the, in rift apart insomniac allowed us to skip those missions yeah are these skippable or are these integral to the this main plot? this felt like you're not going to progress gotcha. unless you do it it also wasn't that long but what's cool about it is this museum is like a, a music museum so there was a lot of instruments around and like some of the ways that you distract um some of the people uh so that you can get past them will be like shoot web at like a piano and it'll like react um or like a drum kit and like it hits the bass drum and like they're like what's going on like all that type of stuff and it was cool because it felt very like interactive in a way that like wasn't just like oh clearly hit the one interactable thing and it will um like they'll look at me like what's going on it felt like there was multiple ways i could have got through it mm. and like then I'm escaping, and there's like this like kaleidos or not kaleidoscope, um, xylophone. That's what I was thinking of. Mm -hmm. There's like a xylophone, and your little spider guys run in, and you distract people, and then you run on it, and it starts going as oh, you go, yeah. and then they look yeah. over at it. It's like, oh, it was like things like that that like had I just went a different path, that wouldn't have happened. Gotcha. Um, and it just feels like there's a lot of like care being put into like the small things of the world mm -hmm. that help make the big world feel like you can kind of apply the logic of oh, all this is going on in this museum. It makes it feel like oh, all the other buildings have equal amount of things going on, even if they don't. Speaking of the small things going on in the world, I got a question here from Shamir Mirza who writes in and says, was there any mention of radio stations or music to listen to while swinging in the open world? I'm sure you've seen all the TikToks of Spider-Man 2018 swinging to music, and I just feel like it would be awesome to be able to do that in the game. No, I didn't I didn't notice that. Um, but like I was saying earlier, there was I was really happy with a lot of the the lore kind of talky talky stuff going on um, of the different characters. Is there Spider Twitter? I remember uh, yeah, I think Miles or maybe it was 2018 Spider also. Spider X. <laughs> yeah, Spider X. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. they both had them. They both had them? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I I didn't see see that. Um, but like you're talking to Genki a lot. There's like the, the little app that they have. Like that's referenced a couple times. Um, again, I was like bounced between so many different things that I, that stuff didn't stand out to me. But another mobility thing was um, in addition to the wingsuit, which is really damn awesome, is just like there's a lot more ways to move around that aren't frustrating like there would be times uh in the other games where if you get near central park you're just like ah shit like yep. it's gonna be a drag to get across this thing because there's just not much to swing off and you're awkwardly swinging off these trees trying to catch another one like didn't really feel that good here they know that so there's like a lot of different ways in addition to the wingsuit that just kind of keep you going there's like a big bunch of giant fans <laughs> like, honestly it feels that way but even like when you're on the water like <laughs> I, I don't know if you guys remember but like swinging over the water if you landed in the water it was yeah, like ah, the guy, yeah, yeah. And you have to kind of like jump or whatever <laughs> there's just a lot of little things of like if you're swinging and you touch the water if you have the right momentum you kind of skim along oh, the top of it cool. and spider-man's kind of like surfing like those are like the animations that make this feel like oh there's a they've been cooking dynamic yeah. like as hell yeah. yeah it feels very dynamic and it's it was i was so impressed by that because it felt new it felt fresh and it felt fun it added to the, the like experience of it all which i thought they did a, a really good job with tim can i hit you with a couple of loaded questions oh of course right, these are going to work in tandem uh the first one comes from gim teddies who writes in and says Tim, based on your short time with the game, does it feel justified being a PS5 exclusive and not a PS4? Uh, and then another one from Mattman562. There's been a lot of talk about Insomniac being a studio that makes a lot of great games, but none of them are in that upper echelon. Did anything, see, uh, did anything you see in the preview give you hope that this could be their first title to push into that tier? And I think what they're referencing there is like, you know, in PS Love, you have the conversations mm -hmm. of like, oh yeah, when I think of S tier PlayStation, I'm thinking... Sony Santa Monica, I'm thinking Naughty Dog. And like Insomniac, I put more at the A tier, right? Like that's the thing I've said before. Does this feel like a S tier? And then th does this also feel like a, oh, this gotta be a PS5 game? So this gotta be a PS5 game. Like okay. I, I feel like, again, the fast travel, just how how everything just works the way that it should. It feels good. It's beautiful. Like it, it's just next gen. Like it, all that stuff, I was like, yep, it's more Spider-Man on PS5. And they completely are delivering there. Uh, in terms of the other question, I think that, yes, that is a loaded question, and it's complicated to talk about, because mm -hmm. I feel like even though I don't think this is going to be that S-tier conversation that we're having, which, again, can mean something different to everybody, but, like, I, I personally 
see things like a God of War or a Breath of the Wild as a different tier than other games. And does that make them better? Yeah, but not necessarily. It reminds me a lot of a Best Picture nominee versus a Marvel movie. No matter how good an MCU movie is, it's just not going to, to be that. You know what I mean? And yeah. that's totally okay. The subject matter. Because it's, it, it, it totally, like Endgame, Infinity War, these things that we love, they did it. They nailed it. Spider-Man 2 is nailing it. Yeah. Like, I feel like, like I am happy that this game is what it is uh, and is not doing something else. Like, I feel like they are, they are delivering on every front of what they're trying to accomplish with this game. And I think the biggest part of that, like, to devil's advocate myself and make an argument for this being that tier, potentially, and, like, being a, a upped uh, game, I do think that the character work and I think that the, um, the the writing is extremely strong. And I think that's backed up by the fact that we've had two games now um, with characters that are interesting. And whether they are characters that we've known like Peter and May forever or newer characters like Miles and his extended uh, group, there's, um, I forget her name. Um, Mary Jane. No, 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 no. Stacy. Um, the the, 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 the artist character that um, uh, uses sign language. Um, oh yeah, from uh, Miles. Gloria, I, I think it is. Mm -hmm. No, it's not Gloria. But anyway, um, she was back, and she was like a, a pretty like core thing to the the Miles uh, story that I was getting, and I was like, this is awesome. Like this feels is very it Haley. Haley Cooper. It is Haley. Got it you. is Haley, and there was powerful stuff. Like her and Miles, like having conversations. I was like, this to me feels like very good writing. It feels like it's it's pushing these characters in interesting ways. She's like uh, 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 if, as, long, as far as I know, an original character for this insomniac world. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And they're like making great use of her, and I feel like it it ties into the gameplay. It ties into the the world that they're building of these Spider-Man games, and that's the stuff that I think is like I don't want to write off as like oh it's just more Spider-Man and like it's not as good as a God of War or Last of Us or whatever. I do think the character moments like are, and they they, they have the potential to be as good if not better than uh what we love so much about those other games like there's a lot of love and care being put into that stuff where it's yeah sure it's like pulpy action stuff but like there's real depth of the characters that we saw in miles morales like i feel like we to me this game is just the miles moralesification of spider-man 2018 running on ps5 and that's yeah. all good things to me hell yeah uh, I think my final thing that I'll bring into you, Tim, is actually a Janet Garcia special. Mm. A couple of years ago, well, Janet on PS Love You, during one of our previews, hit us with this thing called a rose, a bud, and a thorn. Okay. Right? A rose is something good that happened or something positive that happened from your preview. A bud is something that you're, look for, you're looking forward to seeing. And then a thorn is something bad that happened or a negative. This is an exercise that Janet would use when she was okay. a teacher. And so I also credit the teachers that I assume are in Chicago. I think she taught in Chicago. I credit the teachers, but also Janet Garcia with this. So, Tim, give me a rose, a bud, and a thorn. I mean, the rose was just how in I was. Like, playing two, three hours, could have been ten hours. I would have been sitting there. And, like, I, I, it... They're delivering. They did it. Mm -hmm. So I put the controller in my hands. I put the headset on my head, and I was like, "Oh my god, we're back, baby!" Like, I literally can't say anything else besides that. Of like, they, they did it. They, this game is going to be incredible. They're completely confident, and they should be. Um, Thorn is, I would say, it, it can be a little cumbersome and complicated. Like uh, the combat, sometimes it, it, it can be very button mashy, and it kind kind of can be a little bit um, like I know what I'm trying to do right now. But the controller and like remembering what I need to hit, having the L1, R1 prompt pop up in the right place, it can get a little frustrating sometimes where um, for as like flashy and fun as the combat is, sometimes I don't totally feel like I'm in control. Okay. Not the worst thing, but I feel like that's true of the other games and it, it maintains true here. Uh, I do think that this is the best it's been so far though. Uh, just even having the, the new HUD goes a long way. Um, the last one is a bud, which is something you're looking forward to seeing. I mean, I, this is going to, I think, mean a lot to the people that have been listening to us talk about this on Games Daily. It's the story, and it's Venom. I, Let's go. I've been talking a lot of, of potential shit, Venom. being like, hey, man, like Spider-Man stories are hard because we've seen them done so many times, good and bad. Venom stories, I think, are even harder because we've seen them rarely done well, often done poorly. And the things that we want from a Venom story are kind of corny <laughs> and it's like getting it right between Peter saying like he has teeth 
I do too. Hmm. It's like, is that cool or is that really fucking lame? And it's hard to to get that right. And so far, I'm very surprised. I I'm very in to how they're dealing with it. The Peter stuff can can be corny. We saw it in the trailers, and it's like oh, this is fucking weird. But that's what it is. And I think contextually, I'm more excited than I, I than worried because um, Peter Parker, Spider Man, they're jokers. They're always out there saying stuff, and like it's you know they make puns all the time, all that. You add like he's a little angry and evil now to that. Some of the weird things he says feel less like, ugh, he shouldn't be saying that, and more like, yeah, this Peter would say that yeah. if, if he was, like, juiced up a bit, you know? And um, so I think they did a great job there, but really for you me. You really ticking me off. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You've yeah. crossed the line, buddy. Um, it, we didn't get uh, much Venom, or if any Venom, actually, uh, in this demo, but the interactions and setup between Craven the Hunter, the Lizard, and you having the suit, I'm like, holy shit, y'all are nailing it. Like, I'm very, very into it. The demo actually starts in a church, and it's Peter being affected by the the, the bell and the suit kind of coming off of oh him, God. and they start, like, dealing with all that stuff. But then it's him going up against Craven, who has um, kind of set Kurt Connors off and turned him into the lizard again. We get, like, kind of um, little passing things of, like, oh, this is the second lizard incident. Like there, there mm. was one before. Um, of course, we knew because Spider-Man won at like the Halloween party. There's like a bunch of people dressed as the lizard, but like this is now like a souped-up lizard because of Craven. And Craven's like going out there trying to um, soup up prey so that he That's can awesome. really prove how badass he is. And it's like, come on. That's, That's pretty awesome. fucking awesome. Um, but yeah, there's like an insomniac touch to it all that I feel like. All of those story uh, beats, um, I was talking to, to Brian Intahar uh, about it, and um, he was telling me, he's like, oh, I've been hearing you talk about the Venom stuff. He's like, every time you say it, I just feel so good because I know we nailed that stuff. <laughs> he's like, that the Venom, pff, yeah, that's, that's we got that shit made. And so to me, awesome. yeah, it's, it's the Venom, it's the story stuff that I, I'm looking forward to the most because they are really impressing me. Hell yeah. And any final questions for Tim? No, I was just happy to be here, everybody. Yeah. I'm happy to be here too. I'm happy that Spider Man's right around the corner. It is, man. September what, 20th? October. October. Shut up. Oct sorry, October. October 20th. Oh, not, not September. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's it's real close. And I, y'all, this is. Sorry. I mean, it's shut up. <laughs> six days away. No, it feels six days away. I understand that shit. Like, oh, fuck, why don't we have our review codes yet? <laughs> yeah. We're playing this thing. There's, there's a lot, man. This game, there's a lot to do. Uh, it, everything I did was fun. I can't wait. Like, I'm going to want to platinum this game. Like, that's all. Like, I already know. And like that's yeah. uh, I think a very, very good sign. Um, love how next gen it all feels. Um, it feels like they've earned this universe that they have, and it feels like now they're just having fun, uh, which oh, yeah. I think is like a, a super, super great place to be. And in terms of like where we're all at with superhero fatigue and all of that, when things are done well, that doesn't exist. Yep. And this is done well so far. Well, stay tuned for more Spider-Man 2 talk right here on youtube.com slash kind of funny games, right here on PS Love You XOXO, and right here, well. Maybe not here, but on the games cast and other shows as well. We're going to be talking a lot about Spider-Man as we ramp up to it. Uh, remember, we're not talking about the state of play here, but you can go over and check out our live reactions over on YouTube.com. So it's kind of funny games. And then also check out KFGD today because that's where we're going to break down piece by piece everything announced at the PlayStation state of play. A quick this week in PlayStation for you. Uh, PlayStation tweeted out that a new PS5 system software update rolls out globally. You're getting new access accessibility features, support for compatible Dolby Atmos enabled audio devices. Hell yeah. Social feature enhancements uh, and PlayStation remote play support on additional android devices what's up tim i have one more spider-man thing i want to say that yeah. I, I can't believe i didn't bring up because uh this is something that i was like holy shit this is freaking awesome you know the the stealth missions that aren't the mary jane and like miles kind of like mm -hmm. it's like the ones one? where you have to take out all the enemies the snipers right? and all that yeah. stuff which are like super fun and like they're built to be frustrating where it's like That's my favorite missions yeah. i'm surprised uh, i didn't ask about that those are super like when they're done right they're super yeah. great right but it's like sometimes on, on uh attempt 20 you're yeah. just like oh my god like i just want this to fucking work and not to be seen and all that stuff there's a new feature that i think is awesome where you can make a web line so you can like choose a target you shoot the web out and it makes the um tightrope and then That's you can awesome. tightrope yourself over to get in better positions to be able to stealth take down people and it opened everything up i'm about to be going crazy so much man that was one That's of the, the most exciting thing you said coolest i'm new very features. excited and again it just goes back to what i keep saying which is I feel like uh, at every turn, they were like, what option is more fun 
to play. Let's just do that. Even if it's mm -hmm. a little weird, uh, like lore wise or story wise, and like it makes it a much funner video game. Oh yeah. Um, we got PS Plus Extra September lineup. You're getting Near Replicant, Thirteen Sentinels, Civ Six, Star Ocean, DF, and INF. Sniper Ghost Warrior Contracts Two, Ohm Sphere, Lith uh, Unpacking, Planet Coaster. I put I put some sauce. Yeah, on he that. did that. Yeah. I don't need, I don't know if that's the sauce that was needed for that, but <laughs> that's what it looks like. Honestly, Left Lith Rasir. You applied it, and I'm I'm sticking down my throat. You <laughs> Let's know. Go. God, uh, Planet Coaster. This War of Mine, Cloud Punk, Contra Rogue Core, uh, Tales Noir. Calls of the Sea, sorry, Call of the Sea, uh, West of Dead, and then Paw Patrol. And then for the classic games on Premium, you're getting Star Ocean First Departure R, Star Ocean to the End of Time, Star Ocean The Last Hope, and Dragon's Crown Pro. Uh, PlayStation picks the drop this week looks like this. You're getting Eternites, Nower Play With Your Food, uh, Super Bomber Man R2, Axolotl, The Crew Motor Fest, and Thunder Ray. And that is it for this week in PlayStation. Y'all remember this. As in PS, I love you. XOXO, your weekly PlayStation podcast that you can watch live on patreon.com slash kind of funny or later on podcast services around the globe. Until next time, I've been Blessing. That's been Andy. That's been Tim Ma fucking Gettys. It's been our pleasure to serve you. <laughs>